Hello. All right. This presentation will be about combining the self-determination theory of behavior management taught in the OT program, or SDT, with the applied behavior analysis method of behavior management taught in the special education program, or ABA. When I originally recorded this presentation, it ended up being about 20 minutes, so this version I will be focusing mostly on take-home messages and doing a lot of summarizing it. Um, you're welcome to download the original presentation with my notes for a more detailed presentation. All right, I'm using the RTI triangle to envision the two approaches here. I see STT is focusing on the majority of students, who we refer to as Tier 1 students in both academics and behavior. Um, they're about 50 to 90 percent of the student body. ADA becomes particularly useful for the Tier 2 and 3 students, who make up about 15 percent of the student body. Now, these students need a more targeted and data-driven approach to behavior management than STD provides, uh, possibly due to their having a disability or a variety of other risk factors. Um, in today's inclusion environment, however, content area teachers will have students from all three behavior tiers in their classrooms. Uh, so one of the main tenets of STT is that your classroom management style needs to fulfill your students' basic psychological needs of relatedness, autonomy, and competence. If any of these needs are not filled, you're asking for problem behaviors in your classroom. This is relevant to how you relate to your students and what rules you choose to enforce. STD provides a very nuanced view of motivation, which I like a lot. Um, here they've created a developmental continuum of motivation ranging from amotivated to different levels of extrinsic motivation and finally to intrinsic motivation. Um, as educators, we can affect a student's movement on this continuum through proper management um, and by choosing good educational tasks. Cognitive evaluation theory delves more into the specifics of a good external motivator. Motivators must not interfere with the psychological needs of autonomy or competence, or they will drive the student the wrong way on the developmental continuum. Often this is interpreted as saying that all rewards-based behavior systems are wrong and bad, but instead this should be interpreted as saying that they must be used with caution and be done correctly. Um, some tasks simply aren't internally motivating, and rewards can be done in a right way. All right, so here are some overall strategies that STD suggests. Um, you really need to encourage those feelings of autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Provide structure but not control. Build relationships with your students and make sure you, they know that you're on the same team. You also should be modeling the behavior you want. And if you don't get the behavior that you want, try to take the perspective of the student to figure out why. All right, so now I will contrast this uh, with applied behavior analysis. ABA is a data-driven, targeted approach to behavior management. It also focuses on preventing problem behaviors, but has methods for dealing with situations where that may not be enough. It focuses not only on academic engagement, but also social behaviors. It's useful for all students, but really stands out from STT uh, with Tier 3 behavior students. ABA defines behavior very specifically. Um, in this case, the lawful up here means that it follows predictable rules and has a function. ABA says that there are six functions to behavior. Um, they are obtaining or escaping stimulation or sensory input, um, obtaining or escaping attention, or attaining or escaping a tangible or an activity. And again, if you want more on this, you can uh, download the presentation. All right, so ABA describes a specific behavior pathway. The setting event could be something that happened days, hours, and minutes before the behavior. The antecedent directly precedes the behavior, and the consequence is what happens after the behavior and is often the function. Uh, not having a student's psychological needs field could either be a setting event or an antecedent event in this framework, and this is kind of how STT and ABA work really well together. So ABA kind of has two main strategies of behavior management. Antecedent and setting event strategies focus on reducing the thirst for the functions of the behavior by filling those needs early. This is very similar to STT and the psychological needs. The second strategy is teaching and reinforcing appropriate replacement behaviors to replace the problem behavior so the student still has access to the function of the behavior. And this is where ABA can get really powerful and is sort of unique. So ABA compared to STT. ABA is uh, adequate for students with significant issues, uh, is data-driven, creates behavior support plans, avoids explanatory fictions like that student is just mean, uh, which is not a function or a behavior, and can handle more than just academic engagement. However, it really lacks STT's nuanced views of motivation and reinforcement. Um, and it can also be very time-consuming. And so this is STD compared to ABA. Um, STD provides that nuanced view of motivation and reinforces that people trained only in ABA could really benefit from, and it focuses on prevention. But I don't feel that it alone is adequate for all students, particularly those with behavioral disabilities. I see it more as a mindset or a teaching worldview than a set of specific techniques, which um, makes it perfect for most teachers who deal primarily with Tier 1 and Tier 2 students. Um, but often people trained only in STD reject ABA as bribery when 
special educators are consulting with them, uh, which can be very frustrating. Uh, and so now I'll discuss my case study. Uh, Thomas was a 12-year-old male with high-functioning autism attending a full-time autism program housed in a middle school. I worked with Thomas during my winter term student teaching last year. He was very smart but had a variety of disruptive behaviors, and because of those, he was pulled out of general education classes because his behavior got in the way of his learning, um, which is very frustrating because he was very intelligent. Um, and really, for a good understanding of these next slides, you'll need to download the PowerPoint. I wanted to create a behavior support plan for Thomas, so I took a fair amount of data. On the left, you see momentary interval data where every three minutes I tallied if he was on or off task and why and compared that to some control students. On the right is a graph of that data over several weeks. You can see that period uh, two was rough for him, and that was math. Uh, and then I used this data to create a behavior pathway. All right, so this is the behavior pathway I created for him. You can see the setting events, antecedent uh, behavior, then a decision pathway for him. Um, basically, Thomas would get bored and either check out or strive for peer attention. If that was available, he preferred that. Either way, the true function of his behavior was to obtain sensory input um, to alleviate his boredom. And these stop signs are all antecedent strategies at different points that I suggested. So there were several behaviors that looked similar to Thomas's off-topic behavior. So I created a few confounding behavior pathways so we could differentiate um, on-topic talkouts, for instance, were different from his off-topic talkouts. They had a completely different function, um, and so they needed to be treated in a different way, and this is where ABA can be very powerful. All right, and here are some more confounding behaviors. Um, the bullying one, interestingly, was fixed with a um, antecedent strategy of letting him work in peers. Um, he just wanted to be able to teach students who didn't know how to do that well, um, so he would bully. Um, and then the transition is interesting because that was more of a can't do than a won't do. So uh, you'll notice we had a different strategy for dealing with that. And so here you have um, the competing behavior pathway. You have the replacement behavior and the desired behavior and all that. But really, I felt that this was best served with antecedent strategies like you see here, um, the stop signs. Um, Though we didn't implement all of them, of course, but um, ones we did implement were letting Thomas work in groups, teaching many lessons in math, and basically things that fulfilled his needs of autonomy and competence, um, although I didn't really know that framework at the time. And uh, so I'm a substitute teacher now, and so it's been about a year, but I, I occasionally sub in Thomas's classroom so I can check up on him. Um, it's really interesting seeing that in classroom now that I have an SDT framework as well as an ABA framework. Uh, Thomas still isn't doing great, and frankly, a lot of it is because he's not having a psychological need of autonomy met. I'll uh, certainly make some big changes uh, if I could, but I don't have time to go into the details. And so my final thoughts is um, we all need to work together in schools uh, for the benefit of our students. So we need to get rid of this belief that either ABA or STT is better than the other. Both work, and both work best in tandem, in my opinion. Um, and we need to be consulting with each other, and we can't really do that if uh, we believe that the other side of the fence was trained and then an adequate theory. Um, personally, what works best for me is just to teach like a street performer. Generally, engage students, learn, and display appropriate behavior. Um, so you just got to figure out how to engage them. You need to build relationships with them, make them feel wanted and respected, and uh, then don't be boring. <laughs> and I know that's kind of ironic hearing that from a hurried lecture, but that is really my best advice is just don't be boring. All right. Thank you for your time.